Carl, communication against the Patriots on either side of the ball is very important. Well, communication is just as important as execution here, Bob. You'll see the defense here is in the man coverage. They know they have man coverage. Now, let me slow this down, and you can see two guys right here that have to communicate because there's a tight end and a back. So they have to make sure that they communicate that. That's the communication part. Now let's just watch the execution. It's man, there's a bit of a rub, right? Freeze. These two guys were supposed to communicate. Somebody's gotta have this guy in the flat. They don't. What happens? The guy in the flat's wide open, but they take a poorly covered crossing route. Yeah, Tom Brady elects to go to his favorite target, Edelman, but he had the fullback out in the flat. This, no, it's not covered. Fullback catches the ball, he's all the way down the sideline. We're going to start with how important a return game can be to starting a drive for you. There's no question, and our special teams have really made a positive contribution the whole year. And, and really what they're charged with doing when they go on the field is they're controlling or enhancing our vertical field position. And so the return part of the special teams is so important. And you'll see here we had a dynamic return here. Uh, and, and really what we did is we set it up as, you know, we kind of doubled number four. So as we count, obviously you got one, two, three, four. So we had a double on four as we go through. We doubled on three and then we ran a right return here, which we, we'll get a chance to see. But what you notice here and a lot of times there's a lot of penalties on special teams plays. The blocks were executed extremely well. We created a great uh, crease. And then, and then Ballantyne did an excellent job of running through there. So it, it was really well designed uh, by T-Mac and the guys. And, and you'll notice here as, as we go through it, um, as I play this and then pause it, as we retreat, you'll notice that we're going to create a double team and we're going to create another double team. We're going to block number one and try to hit a crease right through here. And so as you watch it happen from this view, you can see some really good blocks. So we get a double team here on number four. All right, we get a double team right here. And then we come and then we get a double team on number three. All right, number one is forcing the kick and that's who Penny blocks. And then you'll notice Rhett, who's sort of the, the extra returner back there, then comes through and blocks the safety. And you can see we've got great leverage on all the other blocks as well. Sean Chandler gets his block. Josiah gets his block. We've got a seal on the backside. And there's just a nice crease for, for Ballantyne to run through. He's done an excellent job with the return game. He's obviously a guy that's going to have a really bright future. He's extremely tough. And when we get the ball out at the 50-yard line, that gives us an opportunity to score. Showtime is in the house for the first time, and you got your feet wet last week against Minnesota. Um, how difficult was it to not practice with your team for that period of time and then come in in one week and try to get up to speed? You know, uh, it, was, it was very tough, um, depressing at times. Sundays were extremely tough for me. I was in a bad mood uh, just because I, I was away from the team. Um, but... Um, I just had to deal with it. Um, definitely try to stay in touch with the guys and, and wish them luck and tell them good job. Um, and try to be there as much as I can without actually being there. But it was it was tough. All right, you've gone against Bill Belichick's defense, and they're number one in the NFL right now. What makes it difficult when you go against his defense? You know, you, you can expect these guys to be very, very disciplined um, and, and play sound football. Um, obviously, they, are, they have a lot of talent on that team, on that defense. But um, they're going to bank on you making the mistakes. I think they're going to try to pressure our young quarterback and, and try to get in his face and make it uncomfortable and see if we can make mistakes. And they're going to try to capitalize on those. So we're just got to play our ball, play fundamentally sound football, convert on third down, hold on to the ball. When we get to the red zone, uh, don't, sat, don't be satisfied with three points. Get six points. Um, I think we'll be, we'll be fine. Anytime you play the New England Patriots, especially when you play them in Foxborough, it takes everybody on the football team to play above the numbers. Yeah. I'm going to start off with our 07 Super Bowl championship, this is a good Super one. Bowl 42. You know, after losing week 17 up against this football team, it was a group effort to win Super Bowl 42. And for us above the numbers, the two key ones, 
control the time of possession, which we won, and third down, we want to keep Tom Brady off the field. We were 50% in Super Bowl 42, so that was our above the numbers. That's in that amazing. One. I remember watching this in college and being like, "Man, those Giants." You're trying are... to make me feel old. No, man. I mean, not not necessarily, but <laughs> I remember watching this game and being like, "Man, the Giants are playing one of the best ball games that I've seen to date. Just efficient. They held the ball. They made all the right plays, and obviously, this catch was the highlight uh, of that game. So it was a fun game to watch for sure. And then let's go to your. Oh, man, I know this one very well. Super Bowl 46. Obviously, this was a lot of talk was about the rematch, obviously playing them again from 2007 uh, all the way down to 2011. And I just remember the practices. Deal, you were there, obviously. Yep. The practices leading up to that Super Bowl, there wasn't a doubt in our mind that we weren't going to win that football game. We were perfect on the practice field. We were held accountable for everything that we did. All of our practices started 15 minutes early. Started 15 minutes early because we were all just out there. Yeah. Not because they scheduled them early. We were just out there ready. So I think just like... These two Super Bowls this is going to take all hands on deck for the Giants to beat the New England Patriots. Now, you guys are experts in mm -hmm. Bill Belichick, everything that is Belichick. What is Daniel Jones going to have to deal with, especially considering his running game is limited this week? I know what Bill is telling his team, and that is just do your job. Daniel Jones just needs to do his job. And don't try to be Superman or anything like that. Just get the ball off, uh, hand the ball off, be a leader in the huddle. What is Belichick, do you think, going to want to try to take away from the Giants? Because that's his thing, is take away whatever your greatest strength is to try to confuse the quarterback. They're going to take away time. They're going to try to put as much confusion at the line of scrimmage as possible. Because if the kid has time and they play man coverage, they can't cover forever. But they rely on a really good five-man pass rush, and they play good sound defense on the back end. But if the young man has time, he'll find a receiver. Three and five. Overall, counting the Super Bowls, Bill Belichick is three and five all-time against the Giants, a franchise you know he has tremendous respect for. Now, two of those losses came in 1991 and 1994 when he's head coach of the Cleveland Browns. But... How do you explain this, Carl? You don't, and he can't explain it either. I've talked to him about it, and just what he's accomplished versus what he's done against the Giants, it just doesn't jazz for him. All right, so the number 18 is significant, right? Peyton Manning wore that number. When you think about Brady versus Manning and the great rivalry they had, it's almost fitting. Tom Brady needs 18 yards to pass Peyton Manning and move into second in the all-time yardage list behind Drew Brees. These are numbers that just people thought – would never get to. And this is so amazing, too, because both guys have been uh, affiliated with each other, closely compared throughout their careers, and how beautiful is it that he's got to get 18 to pass 18? When you concentrate your defensive efforts, do you want to stop that running game? Because if you do, that means Brady's going to throw it. Your concentrated effort is playing sound at the line of scrimmage. He's a quarterback who's going to be in the pocket. You know where he's going to be. So if you play your responsibilities as a defensive line, you can stop, run, and rush pass. But once you start to lose your integrity along the line of scrimmage, that's when things get out of sorts with you. That's when you get susceptible to play action pass. Here's question number one. What's the biggest challenge for the Giants in this game? Dealing with Tom Brady or dealing with the Patriots' defense? Whoa, I got it. Uh-uh. You got it? It is dealing with Tom Brady. Come on. Have you been watching the games? It's dealing with the defense. They got the number one defense in the NFL. As you can tell, we've been struggling a little bit against the best defenses. Well, you've been struggling a little bit in your pass coverage <laughs> and in your tackling. So I'm going to say it's dealing with Tom Brady. The brain of Brady. The brain of Brady. I'm just going to say the defense, Belichick, rookie quarterback, all that stuff going on. Plus, they can brush the passer. Plus, they know how to study the receivers. Plus, they're just a good defense. We got to figure out a way to get something going on offensively, and that defense is going to be very hard to compete against. Brady's brain. <laughs> I like the Brady's brain. Could be a meme. Um, <laughs> interesting. Cross, the offensive guy, went with Belichick, and Banks, the defensive guy, went with Brady. All right, here's the second question for you. Gronk's retired. He was Brady's go-to guy. 
Who is the most dangerous skill position player now on the Patriots roster? You got a choice of about a zillion backs <laughs> and a zillion wide receivers. Still Edelman. Edelman's still the guy. You know, everybody else is out there running around doing whatever. Edelman's the go-to guy if it's third and whatever. Edelman, third and Edelman for, for the Patriots. That's the most dangerous guy on the offense. Howard, I couldn't disagree more. Oh. It's not a bunch of guys running around doing whatever. <laughs> Everything has a purpose in that New England <laughs> offense, and it's the next guy guy who's available the open guy is the most dangerous weapon in their offense so this week it could be a running back next week it could be an unknown tight end or a free agent wide receiver you just have to wait and see and do your job because they're going to get the most available guy that is advantageous oh to them. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to say it again. Third and Edelman. Remember, I'm telling you this. Third and the, Edelman? They throw the ball to this guy all the time. Third and Edelman? <laughs> no. It could be third and a running back oh. or third and anyone. It's Edelman. I'm telling you, unless he has a stomach flu, he'll be the most dangerous guy on the field. So what happens when you take Edelman out as the most dangerous threat? Then it becomes someone else, right? I think somebody on the sideline is – I think people are guarding him on the sideline because he's still dangerous. Okay. I disagree. Hey Giants fans, Jabril Peppers here. Want to be the first to see Giants videos? Subscribe now.